Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My job today is basically to depress you. And uh, I don't know why the organizers chose me specifically for this topic, but I'm usually a very soft person, but I'm going to have to sort of, you know, do my job as uh, required. So please forgive me and try inshallah to not depress people, but rather warn them, warn ourselves and everyone around us. My brothers and my sisters, in continuation from what we spoke about yesterday and today, all day, mashallah, the purpose of these events is life change. We want people to leave this hall today, different people than the people that entered the hall. We want to change our path, our direction. We want to change our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the better. And Wallahi al Azim, our purpose is never to make anyone lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or lose hope in Jannah. But also, my brothers, our job is not to lie to people and make them feel that everything's beautiful and easy and nice and the road is full of roses when really there's dangers there. And it is a religious requirement. We all have to understand as Muslims that one of the pillars of faith, one of the required components in your heart is fear of Allah and fear of Allah's punishment. If you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on judgment day with a heart that only knows hope and love, your heart is corrupt. And nowadays, unfortunately, in time of corruption we're living in, we find a group of people that sort of, uh, in their philosophy, in their approach, they say, Sheikh, we don't want to fear Allah. We don't want to hate Allah. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want to be scared of Him. We don't want to be scared of hellfire. I'm not like you. I worship Allah out of love. And sometimes, unfortunately, this language sells itself. Some people appeals to some people say, yes, I like this Sheikh. He only talks about Jannah. I love that. My brothers, we have to understand fear of Allah is a condition of proper Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, يَفَرْهَبُونَ A clear and direct and precise order. Fee me. Fee me. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the world subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us or part of our heart to fee him. It's not only out of love. Rather, fee comes before love and hope. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when describing the believers and the pious people, he said, يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا When they when they supplicate to the Lord, when they when they beg from the Lord, the condition first is fear. And after fear, there's hope. And the hope will always last, inshaAllah. But my brothers and my sisters, let's be honest with ourselves. And I want to ask you again one of these hard questions. Do we really fear Allah? Are we really worried? Do we, are we actually afraid of hellfire? I always ask myself this question. I'll talk about myself so no one gets offended. I have a long history of offending people, so I'll try to be polite. It's Perth, it's a different you know, city. I don't want to, I don't want to make enemies here too. But I want to ask you a question. Do we really have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts? Are we really afraid of hellfire? The usual answer is, like I heard in the audience already, yes, of course. What's I talking about? Of course we're afraid of hellfire. Like, mm. My brothers and sisters, what are the signs of fear? When someone is afraid of something or someone, the signs are apparent. Again, we are, we are very, very good. We are experts in claims. Are you afraid? Yes. We know the answer. Since I was four years old, my mom taught me, fear hellfire. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid.
but really in your heart are you worried are you concerned is there concern in your heart from hellfire there has to be signs i want to see your proof your claim is not enough you see in australia in this country that we live in they say to you never mess with the ato the australian taxation office Everyone's afraid of the ATO. This is why all businesses, business owners, people, they don't want to, they don't want ATO to be your enemy. They say if ATO gets onto you, they will take you down. We're afraid of the police. We're afraid of ASIO. I'm sure they're recording us now. We're afraid of, you know, we're afraid of punishment. We're afraid of loss. We're afraid of speed cameras. Ever seen a driver? Speeding, mashallah, with his car, speed camera alert, you know, in his car or something, or GPS, or is he speed, speed camera, speed camera, he slows down straight away. It's a sign this person is worried, is concerned. But all of us, we say, I'm afraid of hellfire, I'm afraid of hellfire, I have fear of Allah. But we look around us, and people are living on a holiday. Where, where is that fear? Where is that extreme worry and concern we're hearing? Have you ever, ever in your life spent a whole night and you could not sleep the whole night? Not a movie, not a, you know, a claims, really, genuinely. I don't want answers, everyone with himself. Have you ever spent a night that you could not sleep out of fear of hellfire? I know people who couldn't sleep because they have an exam next morning. Someone couldn't sleep because he is in love. Young men, you know, when he falls in love, he can't sleep. And wallahi, he is not lying. A sister, mashallah, she's in love. She can't sleep. They stay on the phone all night. And if they can't talk, they think of each other all night. And wallahi, they are not lying. Some people, uh, some guys, they have caught next morning. He can't sleep. When was the last time you could not sleep at night because you, are, you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart? When was the last time do you see a brother in the mosque or in the road somewhere, his face is pale and yellow, his eyes are red and said, what's wrong? He goes, Wallahi brother, I'm afraid of hellfire. You will laugh at him. This guy's serious? He's, uh, I think he's overdosed from the event. Someone take him, you know, to the beach or something. Uh, let him have some fun. It's not normal in our time. Fear of everything in our life is normal. But fear of Allah has become abnormal. And this is, wallahi, the purpose of my talk tonight. We want people to fear Allah. We want people to feel worried. Allah described the believers and said, and open your ears and hearts. He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, describing pious people. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ Those who are worried, those who are in fear of the punishment of the Lord, and Allah followed it by an ayah saying, إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّهِمْ غَيْرُ مَأْمُونَ Verily, my brothers and my sisters, no one, no one is safe from the punishment of Allah. Unfortunately, me and you have come to internal conclusions. You know what the conclusion is? You know what that conclusion, that sad conclusion is? I'm all right. Really, man. Ask your heart genuinely. Come on, man. Am I really going to go to hellfire? Like, Habibi, I pray, I fast, I went to Hajj. Let's see if I go to hellfire, what's going to happen to the rest of the ummah? People are clubbing, you know, drugs, this, that, falling in sin, falling in zina. I'm going to go to hellfire. Alhamdulillah, I'm all right. This disease is very dangerous. Why is it dangerous, my brothers and sisters? Why is this disease dangerous and it's widespread? If you look deep in your heart, in your heart you will find that part of you doubts that you will be punished. This is why we talk about hellfire. And the talking, the words are going, you know, every direction. But on my ears, what? He's talking about the kuffar. He's, oh, Alhamdulillah, man. Wallah, I'm all right. Wallah, I'm not that bad. 
When you look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, you find the great companions. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu anhum ajma'een. People, the Prophet of Allah himself, told them, gave them glad tidings, you are going to Jannah. Yani, part of his belief now is to trust that he will not be punished. But after all of this, they still had fear of Allah in their hearts. They still couldn't sleep at night. They were still worried of facing Allah on Judgment Day. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, the Prophet of Allah told him, Ya Abu Bakr, the eight doors of Jannah will beg you to enter from them. Imagine the eight doors are competing. Please come from here from this door. Umar radiallahu anhu, Prophet of Allah said, when you, Umar, when you take a path, Shaitan picks another road and walks in it. Uthman, the Prophet of Allah, married two of his daughters to him. Imagine the Prophet, the Prophet of Allah is your father-in-law. Imagine, you know, Ali radiallahu anhu, all the great companions, the Prophet of Allah, Ashar and Bashareen, the ten companions, even Glata in one hadith. Bang, 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 in Jannah, in Jannah, in Jannah. But still, my brothers and my sisters, they had the fear of Allah in their hearts. So I ask you a question now. Why is it that me and you are not worried? Why is it that me and you have no fear? People try to philosophize the matter and say, brother, because I have trust in the mercy of Allah. Brother, I'm not like you. I have trust and confidence in the mercy and rahmah of Allah. I say to them, what did Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman have, radiallahu anhum? Doubt in the mercy of Allah? No. If you were pious, you will be on their path. If your heart was a sound heart, you will have the same conflicting feelings that they had, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. Hope and fee. Hope and fee. But we have hope and hope and hope and hope. Fear of Allah sometimes crosses your heart. You hear a lecture, juicy, you know, talk or something and will affect you a bit. But you walk out, you start talking to your mates and <laughs> we laugh all day, all night. No problem. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, describing the Quran, أَفَمِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَعْجَبُونَ وَتَضْحَكُونَ وَلَا تَبْكُونَ You read the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're amused. You laugh and weep not. A proper and sound heart has to have fear of Allah. Has to weep from the fear of Allah. We have to have these feelings. They are signs of proper Iman. Now part of the problem is that we don't know, we are misinformed on why we should be afraid sometimes. This is why description of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described his punishment in the Quran. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam helped and explained more. His job was to explain the Quran. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went further explaining details that wallahi, if someone has trust in Allah and his Prophet, you should not be able to sleep. You should have this continuous fear of being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now my brothers and my sisters, no matter what we say, no matter how much we try to describe hellfire and describe the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will always fall short because words will never be like reality. And description of something you have never seen before, it's very, very, very hard. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described hellfire in his own words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us. And just for our understanding, my brothers and my sisters, just for our understanding, for mine and yours, sometimes logic plays a big factor in imagination. Sometimes I can't see something. When I say, for example, to you, you know, uh, the distance between Perth and Sydney is four hours by plane. Your brain sort of can have a perception of how far this distance is. 
because you've traveled such distances before. But when I say to you, for example, Wallah, the sun is 150 million kilometers away. We're talking 150 million kilometers. These numbers, they're sort of ridiculous to us. So, oh, it's a, it's a very big distance. It's perception, it's beyond your perception now. But when I say to you, the closest star to our solar system is 4.1 light years away, if I remember correctly, light years, the time it takes light to travel one year, 4.1 light years away. Now I'm being really ridiculous. You really don't understand. Likewise, my brothers, no matter how much we describe hellfire, trust me, it is worse than what you can imagine. It is worse than what your brain is designed to understand. It is she punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. When he decides to please, when he decides to reward, his reward and his pleasure is perfect in Jannah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to punish, his punishment is also perfect. The perfect punishment. Nothing worse. Nothing can be more harsh. Nothing can be more severe because he is the engineer of this body. He created your soul and your body. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has designed the punishment for your soul and for your body. If you take the wrong path. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just for our understanding starts by saying Logic. Minimum punishment. Minimum punishment in hellfire. Minimum punishment on judgment day is that a person will be forced to stand on two pieces of live coal, burning hot coal from hellfire. His brain will start boiling from the heat. The heat will travel from your feet to your brain until it starts boiling. It's not the, it's not the bad news. The bad news is He will be convinced beyond doubt that no one punishment cannot be more than this. And by Allah, he is receiving the least punishment. This man is cruising. This man is having fun compared to what is there from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hellfire, my brothers, is very serious. You can't enter hellfire in the bodies that we have. You'll evaporate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala redesigns your body number one your size increases they say in the hadith your tooth will be as big as mount uhud you know mount uhud ever been to medina ever seen mount uhud that's not you that's not your arm that's your tooth ever your skin your skin will be a distance a travel distance of three days, the thickness. To be able to handle the torture. To be able to handle the punishment. And still, after this, your skin and your organs will not last. They will melt. Every time your skin goes, your skin cooks and it does not, it cannot feel any more punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recreates your, your skin to continuously taste your punishment. I want you to imagine my brothers and my sisters being birth, being birth in fire in this dunya. I don't know if any of you ever experienced the heat of fire in this world. People get burnt. I had a friend of mine in Sydney who had extreme burns in an accident. Wallahi, the sight of the 
torture this person went through appears on his face his face is burnt his whole body is burnt wallahi just seeing him and he, mind you he lived after it wasn't a very very big thing but still wallahi the pain appears on his face and this is the fire of dunya well guess what hellfire is 70 times 70 times worse than the fire of this dunya 70 times worse one thousand years fire is cooking until it became bright red then another thousand years until it became white white flame and then another thousand years until it became pitch black the fire of hellfire is not red or white like the flames you see or yellow it's black dark black and the ulama say my brothers that in any punishment in this dunya look at the design of allah in any punishment in this world any punishment you receive gets decreased by certain certain factors they say a couple of things always decrease punishment what are they Number one, when you are being punished in dunya, there is always hope that soon the punishment will end. You get jail in, in Australia here, which is like a hotel compared to the rest of the world. But you get jail sentence in Australia here and you are struggling. You miss your family. You miss your wife. Very depressing. People become suicidal in jail locked up in a cell can you imagine segro you know alone in a cell for 23 hours we imagine this and we freak out oh, wow allahu akbar this is very hard but even this person has in his heart hope that one day i will either leave the jail and go back to my life or i will die worst case scenario i have life in jail i will die and the torment will end well guess what the punishment of hellfire is designed in such a way time becomes meaningless time becomes irrelevant why my brothers and my sisters people who do not have iman at all will go to hellfire khalidina fiha abada everlasting torture infinite does not end not a thousand years not a million years, not a billion years, not a, not a thousand trillion, zillion, these, you know, stupid numbers after. Infinite. Doesn't end. And if you are a believer that said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, yes, alhamdulillah, because of the blessing of being a Muslim, a follower of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will live one day. But don't get too happy. Don't say like Banu Israel. Banu Israel said, what وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا Banu Israel said, oh, we are the chosen people. Like Muslims say nowadays. We are the chosen ones, selected few. Even if we enter hellfire, we will go there for a couple of days. Who said it's a couple of days? Do you have a covenant from Allah, a contract with Allah? Yes, you will leave one day. But guess what? One day of the hereafter is like a thousand days here. Imagine punishment in the hereafter can be a thousand years in hellfire, a million years in hellfire, a billion years in hellfire. Wallahi, even a second in hellfire, a second in hellfire is beyond your imagination in pain. A person will be brought from, from, from in front of hellfire from dunya. An'am ahl al-ard. The most luxurious man to ever live in this world. Happy, everything easy. He never had a day of hardship in his life. Women, shahwat, desires, friends, love, money, name it. Health, everything is good. But he is destined to go to hellfire in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dip him for one second in hellfire. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, or he will be asked, هَلْ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا قَطْ Have you ever seen any luxury or ease in your life? The man will take oath and he is true. He will say, يَا رَبْ مَا رَأَيْتُ نَعِيمًا فِي حَيَاتِي By Allah, I have never seen any ease in my life. Because of one second in hellfire. Imagine if you are sentenced for a thousand years. One year, one day, wallahi. The smallest test in this dunya, we can't handle. If it's a bit hot, wallahi, some heat. Dunya, worldly heat. Wallahi, our, our people can handle it. Imagine handling the fire of hell. So those who are planning on having hope to leave, I'm sorry, you have no idea. What you are playing with here. You are playing with fire where time has no meaning. Even if it's a thousand years, even if it's a million years, even if it's one day. Wallahi, it's enough to destroy you completely. So this hope in the punishment designed by Allah is taken to the minimum, even for the believers. When will I leave? The second thing, the second thing that people, you know, when they are punished, makes it easy is that after a while they get used to the punishment you see it's a silly you know someone in jail not in australia in australia mashallah human rights and this and that let's say egypt for example where i come from you know when you get jail especially if you're a political prisoner or you're a religious sheikh or something there's torture every day the first day you get tortured it's very severe you're not used to this, you're a nice man, civilized, everything is, you know, bleh. and then they whip you or they harm you or they hang you or they torture you or they electrocute you, whatever it is. They bash you, they hurt you, it's very bad. But then after this happening every day and it repeat every day, after one month, you grow what we call rough skin. They bash you, you smile. They kick you, <laughs> kick more. After, after one year, do whatever you want. Why? Your body got used to the punishment. Well, in hellfire, Allah does not allow you that luxury. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never allow you the luxury of rest in hellfire. No rest. Taste! Your punishment will always increase. Never the same. It will be never the same. Every day, new punishment, new pain. Your skin dies out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you new skin. Always pain after pain after pain. Always on the rise. Always on the increase. No rest, no hope. The scholars say number three, any punishment, any torment, usually you will have people around you who will share the pain with you. Inmates in jail, you know, they start befriending each other, you know, and because they punish together, it sort of alleviates, it takes the edge of the pain away. I get, I get whipped, he's getting whipped, I get bashed, he's getting bashed. It makes me feel a bit better about myself. Guess what? In hellfire, even this in hellfire, even this natural luxury, you will be deprived of in hellfire. People will start abusing each other, blaming each other, throwing guilt and pointing finger at each other. And they will fight and abuse each other to the point where this company will not benefit you in the torment of hellfire. Allah is designing the punishment. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once sitting with his companions and then a rock hit the floor and the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum heard a bang. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, قَالَ أَتَدْرُونَ مَا هَذَا Do you know what this sound is? قَالَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ Allah and his Prophet know better. قَالَ هَذَا حَجَرٌ رُمِيَ بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ مُنْدُ سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفًا This is a rock that was thrown in hellfire 70 years ago. فَهُوَ يَهْوِي الْآنَ حَتَّى انْتَهَى إِلَى قَعْرِهَا It has been dropping since 70 years now. Just now, it has hit the bottom of hellfire. 
That's how big hellfire is. Harruha shadid. Heat unbearable. Qa'ruha ba'id. Depth very deep. Huliyuha al hadid. Your jewelry in hellfire is chains. Huliyuha al hadid. Chains and steel. Wa sharabuha al qayhu wa sadid. And the drink you will have in hellfire is hot water. وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَاءٍ كَالْمُهِ لِيَشْوِ الْوُجُوهِ All the feelings will stay the same. Don't think in hellfire you need no food. You only eat because you want to know. In hellfire you feel hunger, pain like you've never felt before. You get thirsty like you've never felt thirst before. But when you're hungry, your food is zaqoom. What is zaqoom? طَلْعُهَا كَأَنَّهُ رُؤُوسُ الشَّيَاطِينَ A tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in hellfire. The roots are in the bottom of hellfire, feeding off the sewage of all the sweat and blood and burnt skin, all the roots. And the fruit that comes from the fruit, this zaqoom, the Prophet of Allah says in the hadith, if one drop of zaqoom was to fall on earth, it will destroy life on earth. Well, guess what? This is your food. This is the food you will drink, you will eat for disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only eating, not only eat and can't finish. You will be forced to eat. You will ask for food, they will get you zaqoom, and you will be forced to eat until you have a full stomach. Then you will feel extreme thirst. Please, water. ثُمَّ إِنَّ لَهُمْ عَلَيْهَا لَشَوْبًا مِنْ حَمِيمٍ You will be given hot water. Hamim, boiling hot water, hellfire temperature. وَإِنْ يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَاءٍ كَلْمُهُ it will cook your face. Your face will start cooking. Your skin will start melting. Your organs will start going from this water. No comfort, no rest. The scholars say people in hellfire will start screaming out. One day, two days. I'm wearing clothes from hellfire. I'm wearing clothes from hellfire. My chains are from hellfire. My food is zaqoom. My drink is hamim. And I'm in a dark place. I can't see. There's no one to talk to. No friend to complain to. No company. My bedding is hellfire. No rest, no comfort, no breaks. People will start screaming out to the guardians of hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Alayha tisa'ata'ashar. Hellfire has 19 guards, angels, specifically designed for hellfire. Torture. They only know torture. And the leader is Malik, Khazan al Nar. An angel called Malik the guardian, the main guardian of hellfire. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him, he is unable to smile. They can't be soft. Allah described them. They are tough and rough and strong. Unable to disobey Allah. People will start squealing and screaming and begging for mercy from these gods. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمِ I want you please, for once in your life, imagine yourself in this torture. Imagine yourself in hellfire. That's how you make the heart move. That's how we realize how dangerous neglecting deen is. Imagine yourself there. Don't, don't believe shaitan's promise. You, it's far-fetched, it will never happen. Wallah, we are in danger. Wallahi, no one is safe. 
imagine yourself in hellfire in this situation and you are begging for help begging for help وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ فِي النَّارِ لِخَزَنَةِ جَهَنَّمْ أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ My brothers and my sisters, people will beg and beg and beg from the gods not to leave, not to leave, not to stop. The extreme hope, the maximum hope is to have one day break. Just give me a break, please. Let me take my breath. أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ يُخَفِّفْ عَنَّا يَوْمًا مِنَ الْعَذَابِ After Allah A'lam how long the angels, the guardians will respond and say أَوَلَمْ تَكُ تَأْتِيكُمْ رُسُلُكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Didn't prophets come to you with clear signs? قَالُوا بَلَا Said yes. Wallahi. The prophets came to us with few knowledge. The ulama passed on to us the knowledge. We neglected it. We are fooled by this dunya and its luxuries and its fake mata'ah. We are fooled by shaitan and our hawa and our nafs. Qalu bala, yes they came, but please give us hope. Qalu fad'u. The guardians will say, make dua as much as you wish. Beg as long as you want. قالوا فادعوا All your dua is in dalal All your dua is gone It's a waste Nothing, no mercy Can you imagine Being in a situation where there's no mercy There is no rahma There is no hope Put yourself in this situation And compare Compare this situation With the stupid, insignificant Happiness or small happiness or fun you have from disobeying Allah. Wallahi al-Azim. No sane person, no one with half an with half an inch of a brain, will prefer this quick mata of dunya that Wallahi doesn't last over one second of torture there, over being in that situation. قالوا فدعوا وما دعاء الظالمين إلا في ضلال. Make dua as much as you want. Beg as much as you want. There is no hope. If I'm bad, I am bad correctly. Subhanallah, my brothers. The scholars say after this, the people are in unbearable pain. There has to be something. Day in, day out, I'm in torture. I can't see. I'm in a tight position. Every, 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 every torture has accumulated psychological, physical, everything from all sides I'm being attacked. People will still have hope. So they will start calling on to Malik himself, the leader of the guardians of hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the conversation. Can you imagine you lost hope in the guards? And then you start talking to Malik, Khazan and Nar. This angel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for torment. Allah says, Ya Malik, Ya Malik. People of hellfire will start screaming in desperation. Oh Malik, oh Malik. What is the request now? Before the dream was one day break. Now the call is what? Just kill us they are a dream death is a dream now imagine my brothers when death becomes the ultimate hope you have i just want to die please kill me let allah please let allah destroy us make us to rob like, like the Shaykh said, you know, in the beginning, subhanAllah, um, a, a non-Muslim, an enemy of deen, a sinner, will wish on judgment day he becomes Turab. It's a wish that you will never reach. Just make me dust. Make me Turab. No, 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 no. Even that is a luxury not allowed. The scholars of Tafsir, they say in describing this ayah, 
that people will continue calling on to Malik for 1,000 years of the Akhirah. You know what that means? What's 1,000 times 1,000? Hmm? Why are you silent? Is everyone crying? Or? I can't see. It's too much. Huh? One billion. One trillion. One million. One million years. One million years. Imagine you are requesting to talk to a person for one million years. Wanada ya Malik, ya Malik, ya Malik. One million years. Please let Allah destroy us. They say after one million years, Malik turns to them and says, You are staying here. Two words. So people, my brothers and my sisters, in depression, pain in torture unheard of unimaginable they start calling on to Allah there's no more hope the only person that can hear us now and respond to us is Allah so they will start calling on to Allah non-muslims people that denied Allah's existence so thought they were so smart now they are pleading and squealing Sinners that neglected Allah and said, well, don't tell me what to do. I'm free. I don't want to pray. I know it's haram. I'm still doing it. It's none of your business. My business. Then you'll be crying like a little baby. No more arrogance then. He realized, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. After Allahu A'lam how many years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, like in Surah Al-Mu'minun, اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون. Stay humiliated therein and don't speak to me. Don't call on to me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even deprive them of the ability to ask of him. اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون. Before that with a couple of ayat Alam takun ayati tutla alaykum fakuntum biha tukathibun Here in my verses, when my verses recited before you, you used to deny it and not act upon it? Alam takun ayati tutla alaykum fakuntum biha tukathibun Qalu rabbana ghalabat alayna shakwatuna wa kunna qawman dalleen Rabbana akhrijna minha fa in udna fa inna zalimoon قال اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون الشرف أدوني هي your voices أدوني هي you speak you are given chance after chance in this dunya every chance you promise Allah never again I will never do this again I will follow the right path two days later you're back to square one what would make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believe now you really changed no more chances no more hope why my brothers and my sisters would someone choose why would someone choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To risk handling this punishment. To risk the displeasure of Allah. What a humiliation. Shaitan will not help you. Shaitan will not say, I'm with you now, we are together. People will start begging, even Shaitan for help. We want to blame someone. You know, in, in this dunya, when we, get, when we get stuck, I want to point fingers. People will start blaming shaitan. They will start, you know, accusing shaitan. Shaitan will say to them, are you serious? Now? <laughs> you coming to me? You asking me? You know, the famous conversation, the weak and the strong. You know? The weak and the strong, they will start attacking each other. The weak will say to the strong, You led us, you are our leaders, our role models. Take some of the other from us. No, no, everyone, every man is for himself on that day. 
And then when everything is set, we start blaming shaitan. Shaitan will say, Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al Allah promised you the truth. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ I promised you and I was a liar. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِيَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I had no authority or will over you. وَمَا كَانَ لِيَا عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I called you and you responded. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي Today, don't blame me. وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Only blame yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي I will not help you today and you will not help me today. Every man for himself. Why leave the path of deen? Why leave the path of Allah and follow shaitan and follow his promises? Why follow dunya that's not lasting and lose an akhirah? Why, why for some insignificant short Short, happy, fun here in this dunya. You risk going to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hellfire. Wallahi, my brothers, wallahi. Wallahi, if you knew what you are risking. Wallahi, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bless us with even seeing hellfire once before we die. You will never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a second. It is a serious matter. And we have to have this fear in our hearts. Don't let anyone fool you. Always remind yourself of hellfire. Remind yourself of the punishment of Allah. Every day, remember hellfire, remember death. That's how you move yourself towards deen. That's how you make yourself patient. The akhirah is coming. Soon I will have fun. Now is not the time for fun. Time for fun after death, inshallah. If you manage to do this and your heart really trusts and believes, wallahi, your conditions will change. Wallahi, we will be different people. Nowadays claims are easy, but the heart is not affected. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I will finish with this. A young man from the Ansar, from the people of Medina, he radiallahu anhu heard a couple of verses about hellfire like many of us here. Many of us here. He heard this verse from the Quran, it touched his heart. Like we're hoping today that our hearts have been touched. It touched his heart and as a result fear of hellfire overtook him fear of hellfire over took him after a while he could not even come to the mosque he was bedridden bedridden because of what because of fear of hellfire nowadays we know bedridden because he is depressed his wife left him and his kids deserted him Nowadays, we know bedridden because he lost all his money. Nowadays, we know bedridden, you know, people don't like him, he's antisocial. This young man was bedridden from the fear of Allah, from the fear of Jahannam. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard of the matter. So he went to visit him. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered his house the young man saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with red eyes, tears in his eyes. He jumped onto Rasulullah sallam, hung onto him and took a big, a deep breath and his soul left. He died on the spot. فَقَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam جَهِّزُوا أَخَاكُمْ Prepare the funeral for your brother. فَإِنَّ فَإِنَّ الْفَرَقَ مِنَ النَّارِ قَدْ فَلَذَ كَبِدِهِ Fear of hellfire has split his liver in half. Can fear of something have such a physical effect? Wallahi, it does in dunya. You know, in the Asian markets, the stock exchange crashed. You know, a decade ago, when the Asian markets crashed, we heard everywhere in the world, People drop dead with a heart attack. Wallahi, we are that stupid sometimes. People in a soccer match have heart attacks when the team loses. This is the hearts we have in the Ummah now. And Wallahi, this man was Muslim. In Egypt, it happened. People are affected by dunya. Romeo took his life because of Juliet and we praise the sacrifice. People fall into depression, commit suicide because of fake love in this world. But can any of us say, any of us, 
No, Wallahi, I even spent one night. I couldn't sleep from the fear of Allah. Can someone say, Wallahi, because of the fear of Allah, because of the fear of Allah, I cried in solitude like Sheikh Wahaj was talking to us about the seven that will be secluded, will be under the shade of Allah in safety. Remember Allah alone. How fire the punishment, he started crying. We cry in front of movies. You see a nice movie, nice musical background, you know, the storyline is beautiful. And wallahi, even though they tell you we are acting, you know, the actor is alive and the actress is alive. I just saw them on the news the other day. And guess what? I watched the movie 10 times before. And wallahi, still, that's how naive and sorry to say, honest, I don't want to sort of cross the line, but that's how weak we are. You'll watch the same movie, the same actor, the same fakeness, the same story, and wallahi, your heart will still cry. These big boys, Jim, mashallah, muscles, wallahi, she's dying. And you read the Quran, and you hear about hellfire, and you struggle to shed the tea. Do you know what that means? It means one thing. Our hearts are corrupt. If our hearts are genuine and sound like they have to be, you'll be like Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar was once riding his horse or donkey in Medina. He heard not someone talking to him. He heard on the side of the road someone saying, reciting, Inna rabbika lawaqa. Verily, the torment of Allah is coming soon. The punishment of Allah is falling soon. Umar radiallahu anhu could not handle the weight of the ayah. He fell off his horse or his donkey for 20 days. 20 days he was bedridden. People visiting him like they visit a sick man. 20 days from the effect of the ayah. I want you to take this ayah, record it on a tape and hear it in your house all day. And if you shed a tea, I'll give you some money after the event, inshallah. Why? Allah's talking about the kuffar, man. What's that have to do with me? I pray. I fast. My brothers, please don't be naive. A lot of work has to be done. A lot of work on the hearts have to be done. We have to change these hearts by these beautiful environments. The more we sit in these environments, the more the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase. Fear of hellfire will increase. We will be different people. We will realize that wallahi, there is nothing in this world that's worth sacrificing you hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who practice what we hear. Nasa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yajalana min aladina istamiruna al-qawla fa ittabuna ahsana. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Shadu an la ilaha ila ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.